avocado. Yes, this is a giant prickly avocado. That's obviously an unripe banana, right? Now what we did, I actually brought uh, four different bananas to show you today. So this is what we call an apple banana, banana manzana. And if you're not familiar with it, it actually has a slight apple flavor. So there are hundreds of varieties of bananas. We've got 16 here on site currently. So each banana has a slightly, they all, they all taste like a banana, but they all have a slightly different flavor. So this one actually tastes a bit like a, like an apple, just a little bit. Um, when you buy this in North America or Europe, maybe Israel, when it's ripe, the peel will almost be like opening up at the seams by itself. Here, and I think that may have to do with how they're picked to be shipped. Here, as long as they're soft, they don't have to be coming open. Like this one's gonna be a while yet, um, but uh, it will be yellow on the outside and white on the inside. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but a, a, a Cavendish banana, a regular banana, slightly yellow inside, okay? These are almost white, like much lighter in color. These are two different bananas. Honestly, I'm embarrassed to say, I don't know what all the bananas here are called, but they're each different. They have a slightly different flavor. Um, I think it's this one that is, let me see about that. So these actually both look pretty white. They look pretty light colored as well, but they're actually different. Um, we have another one called a date banana, which is also very small, and it's yellow inside. I mean, it's much yellower than a regular banana. Okay, so it's interesting how they how they change in color. Each, again, each has a slightly different flavor. And this one, this is the forbidden fruit. Uh, that means you cannot have it. Um, this is the Cuban red banana, okay? And when they are unripe, in, in Panama, People call them morados. Morado means purple because they're almost a purple color, right? Sort of a burgundy purple color when they're when they're green, when they're hard. And as they ripen, they turn this light sort of orange red color. And the flesh inside is again is quite yellow compared to regular bananas. So it's quite a bit different. And honestly, for the life of me, I mean, I, I knew these when I lived in the U.S. and they were they were okay. When I moved to Panama and started getting them fresh, they, they were for me the best, the best ever. I, so I'm not sure if this is sweeter or less sweet, denser, less dense. It's, it's different. It has a different feel and taste, and, and it's amazing. Plantains are in the banana family. They're, they're usually large. There's actually some plantains that are only this big. And we have one which hasn't fruited yet. We have one plant here that only makes three or four plantains at a time, but they're this long. Yeah, um, and if you let them ripen, see when they're yellow, when, like when they when they look like a banana, a ripe banana, they're still hard, and they're starchy, and they taste bad, and so most people in the world, including people in tropical countries, think you have to cook them, because if you cook them, you break down the starch, they taste sweet, they're they're digestible in the raw state. When they're yellow, you can't eat them. A ripe plantain. You can eat a ripe plantain, but when it's ripe, it's completely black and mushy. Sometimes I'll buy a few, maybe to do a special meal when my family's here, and when they're getting close to ripe enough, my staff throws them away, thinking they're rotten. That's the only time you can eat them without cooking, okay? They have to be, uh, they have to actually be black on the outside. This is one of many varieties of mame sapote. So, Sapote is interesting. I don't remember the which language, what the origin is, but it's a, it's a local native language, sapote, and it means sweet fruit. So there are lots of things that are called sapotes. This one has a skin that's not, um, it, it, it's almost, it almost feels like a baked potato when it's ripe. You know how the baked potato skin gets wrinkled, right? And you know, it's kind of soft. It feels a bit like that when it's ripe. I, I know a guy at a, at a farmer's market that grows sapotes, and I got there late. He had three left, and there are these big round sapotes, mame sapotes. The skin is hard, thick, and they're amazing inside, amazing. 
These are good, uh, but those are amazing. So this is a hard one. You know, here you can see it's softer, okay? And it has to be soft, like most fruits. Most fruits will get softer, not all. Uh, most fruits get softer. Usually, you can smell the fruit. Here, it doesn't smell like anything. Here, it smells like sweet fruit. There, it's a huge family. There's lots of them. The one you're talking about is called a sapodilla here, or a nisparo. Do they taste the same? No, they taste like brown sugar. Lame sapotes are large trees. They can be 20 meters high. Okay, that's pretty, pretty tall. Yeah, it's a big tree, and they'll spread pretty wide. And one of the other things interesting about it, um, they take, can take a year or more to form the fruit. A year or more. It's a very slow process. It can take up to two years, depending on the variety, to form the fruit. And very few fruits take that long. We have many different varieties planted here, but not so much fruit. But they're all, they're all related, they're all quite sweet. And, and like all other sweet fruits, we've been talking about sweet fruits, right? The bananas, the sapotes, are gonna be relatively low in water content. You can feel how dense that is, right? It's not juicy. It ne it's never it's like juice, um, soft like a juicy fruit because it's a dense thing that's relatively low in water in the 70s, uh, 75, maybe, maybe as high as 77% water, okay? which, you know, it's, it's delicious, it's wonderful. I mean, a couple things about it. It's not a, a fruit that I could normally make a whole meal of. Um, when I eat the round, one sapote like that, that I was full. I'd eaten some little bananas, but I didn't need anything else. They're gonna be high in calories like any other sweet fruit. It's probably gonna be somewhere in the order of 75 per 100 grams. So if you want to eat them every once in a while, that's fine. But I would still recommend focusing on things that are high in water content. All right, um, I'll go next to another thing that many of you may not know about. How many of you recognize this? Yeah, what is this? <laughs> avocado, yes, this is a giant prickly avocado. You know. um, this is a guanabana or soursop and it is in the Anona family. So there's Anona, there's um, Sugar Apple, there's Cherimoya, there's Rolinia, uh, and others. This is the only member of the family that's not particularly sweet. Uh, it also has a kind of an interesting texture. Some people say the texture is almost like cooked fish flesh. That's like sort of flaky sometimes. It's juicier than that, but it's an interesting thing. Honestly, it's not my favorite fruit. Um, it's good, but it should be quite soft, very soft when you eat it. Okay, if it's not if it's not soft yet, it's not it's not really ready. Let's let's go to the papayas because uh, a lot of you. Uh, how many of you have never had papaya? Is there anyone here that's never had papaya? Everyone's had papaya. Okay, that's great. Uh, the world's changed. You know, I, when I grew up, I never had papaya as a kid. The papaya does not grow on a tree. It looks like a tree, but it's actually not a tree. It's more like an herb, a grass, same as bananas. Okay, and one of the wonderful things about papayas and bananas is that because they're not trees, they're actually grasses, they fruit quickly. So nine to 12 months from the time you plant a seed, you can actually be harvesting the first fruits. So papayas have, can have a bit of a musky kind of a taste. And I've, what I found is that the, the big ones typically have more of that. Um, in fact, the sweetest papayas are typically the smallest ones, right? The, in Hawaii, there's the strawberry papaya, which unfortunately, if it's conventional, now all GMO, all genetically modified, you can still get organic ones that aren't. But the little uh, strawberry papayas are super sweet. This is still fairly hard. And again, please be gentle with it, but I'll pass this around um, and I'll show you the test Here's a ripe one, slightly different. Again, they come in different shapes and sizes, but when a papaya is ripe, you should be able to indent it with very gentle thumb pressure. Now, the bigger it is, the less give it's gonna have. So the little ones need to be really, really soft. Anyone know what this is? Anyone know what kind of berries they are? Oh, They're mulberries. Yes, These mulberries. are mulberries, right. And mulberries also come in many different varieties. There are some, there's one called the Pakistani berry, which is really, a mulberry, 
but it's very long and very sweet. They grow them in Israel, quite a bit of them. Um, fortunately for me, my friend's house where I was staying in Israel, she has them in her backyard. Oh, uh, Pakistani parents. Yeah. Delicious. Cesarean. But I'm not going to give you her address. <laughs> um, so these are the same, same variety. Okay? This is an unripe berry, and this is what it looks like ripe. Okay? So it has to be virtually black before it's ready to eat. If you tried eating this, it would be very, very tart. Okay? It wouldn't taste very good. There's also uh, white mulberries. They come black or white when they're ripe. Um, yeah, and they'll, they, they're great because they'll grow all over the place. They'll tolerate all kinds of climates. So this is a nearly ripe guayaba. Now that's Spanish. In English, we call this guava. This is a guava in English, <clears throat> guayaba in Spanish. There's another fruit here called guava, but, and we have four different varieties here, but it's the wrong time of year. We also have, I think, four different kinds of guayabas. This one's not quite ripe. Um, they become a very light green color when they're ripe and very soft. This one's still a bit hard, okay? Um, now, we don't eat a lot of these. We don't usually serve these to you. Um, you can see the little black marks on this. Often what's happening is there's little tiny holes and there is an insect that lays its eggs here, and then they go, they crawl inside, and you open it up and it's got worms in it. So if you want to eat these, you need to eat them in the dark. Because <laughs> the, only, the only thing worse than finding a worm in your fruit is finding half a worm. That's disgusting. Um, this is what it looks like when it's still hard and you know completely green. See, this one's still, if it were ripe, it would open really easily. Okay, this is taking a little bit of work. This is a strawberry guava, guayaba. It's pink on the inside. And it's not quite ripe. Um, and good news for you guys, I don't see anything wriggling around. Um, but you can smell this, because it smells amazing. When they're grown commercially, they grow large ones, and they put a bag around each fruit, which is incredibly labor intensive, and so they're expensive. That's the only way they keep the insect off of them. Okay, so we don't we don't bother to do that. We wind up not eating very many. You could, you know, look for the ones that hadn't gotten infected yet because they're not ripe yet, and pick them just before they're ripe, and then they'll ripen inside. But the, the big ones, if like if you're if you're spending some time or if you're stopping at the fruit stand on the way back to San Jose, where the shuttle office stops, they sell these big guayabas there, the ones that are normally sold commercially exported but they pick them so early they never ripen ever I mean ever 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 I have one that I bought when I moved to Panama 14 years ago and it's not ripe yet okay. so they, they never ripen. let's go to what mango yeah everyone knows the mango the mango is the most popular fruit in the world and in India and Pakistan alone there are more than 3,000 varieties of mangoes. More than 3,000 varieties of mangoes. So um, if you haven't yet secured your lot in the community, you're gonna to wanna to do that because we're gonna have a mango festival. It's gonna take a while. It's gonna take a while to prove. But you know, the, the plan is to eventually collect, I mean, imagine if we had like 500 varieties of mangoes. With mangoes, it's actually interesting. You know, you know how the, the apple, uh, excuse me, the mango seeds are these big long things? That's actually not a seed. I mean, you can call it a seed, but inside, there's a bunch of different embryos, okay? One or more, I mean, usually there's two, three. And you need a certain, there are certain varieties of mangoes, which are called, uh, I think they call them polyembryonic, although I think they all have more than one seed, but only those will produce the same fruit. So with this mango, I'm pretty sure if you plant the seed, you get something else. And it might not be edible. I mean, it might, might taste so bad you wouldn't want to eat it. So typically what happens with mangoes is you buy grafted trees, right? You, you, you can take the seed and plant it so you have a nice rootstock. This will produce a nice hearty rootstock. You then take a branch off of the tree that produced this, the same kind of tree, and you put the two pieces of wood together. You wrap it with plastic wrap 
You can put some root tonic on it if you want to, but you put them together, you wrap it with plastic wrap, and they grow together. They heal together. And if you look at some of our trees, we have grafted trees here. We have some grown from seed. The grafted trees usually within a couple feet of the ground, there's usually like a knot. It'll come up and then it'll be a wide spot. That's where they were joined together. When they grow together, it forms that sort of a knob. You can usually see that, okay? So if it's a grafted tree, if you take a branch off a tree that's already producing, it'll produce in one or two years. So if you buy something grafted, it could be this tall. We have trees this tall that have one or two fruits on them. Okay, because it was, a, it was a branch that was already producing, it just keeps on producing. If you're growing fruit from seed, most fruits need five to six years to start producing. And some need more, some less. We've got more than 200 jackfruit trees, several different varieties. Uh, they'll start producing in three or four years. And we don't, we don't have any jackfruit right now, unfortunately, to show you. Um, but they're bigger than half a person. A jackfruit can be up to 50 kilos. It's the largest tree fruit in the world, okay, up to 50 kilos. Um, fortunately, there's not so many jackfruit accidents, because that could kill you. But jackfruits don't grow on branches. They grow on the trunk. They're not always huge. Sometimes jackfruits are only three, four kilos. Uh, we had, I have a friend that has an organic jackfruit farm. Hey, Rodrigo, uh, he'll probably see this. Hey, you know, send us, send us a few jackfruits, right? So he sends over, what was it, like 90 kilos? We had tons of it, tons of it. It was, it was almost too much for us to eat. Um, we did our best, the three of us. It's yellow flesh inside. Um, if you, how many of you have never tried jackfruit? Never tried it? Okay. Okay. How many of you don't know what it tastes like? Same people? Because some of you actually have had jackfruit flavor. If you've ever had juicy fruit gum, ever chewed juicy fruit gum? That's jackfruit flavor. That's what jackfruit tastes like. Kind of. I mean, jackfruit tastes better than chewing gum. But it's, it's the flavor of jackfruit that they're using for that. So jackfruits grow very quickly. Um, mangoes, typically five to six years, but you know, if you graft them, it can be much faster. Now again, you know, ripe mango, here's an unripe mango. It's still green. Now, sometimes ripe fruit won't be all yellow or red or orange. Sometimes it'll still have some green, that's okay. More important than the color is, is it soft? Does it smell like a mango? This smells really nice. This doesn't smell like anything, okay? It's not putting out its perfume yet because as the fruit ripens, the enzymes are breaking down those more complex cells. Proteins become amino acids, fats become fatty acids, starches become sugar, right? Every fruit has all three. A little bit of the first two, mostly sugar, when it's ripe. Um, here, when it's all the complex stuff, it's hard. You could probably hurt somebody with this. You're not going to hurt anybody very badly with the ripe mango. Um, this, yeah, and it doesn't smell like much. And so, you know, you probably don't want to try eating it this way. Now, there are places in the world where people eat green fruit. Unripe fruit is very difficult to digest. I would not recommend eating this unripe. So again, there are thousands and thousands of varieties of mangoes in the world, more than 5,000 varieties of mangoes. Um, and we have probably here, I think we have maybe eight or nine varieties so far. Here we've got some cantaloupe. And so cantaloupe is interesting. Um, you can see this, the unusual skin pattern. This is different than most melons. Most melons have smooth skins, like a watermelon, a honeydew, a canary melon, a frog skin melon, peeled sop, all have smooth skins. This skin, they call this crenellated, like a brain, crenellations. And, and the little spaces in here can harbor an invisible food mold, okay? So someone that's got candida is best avoiding cantaloupe because just handling the fruit like I am now, there's mold on my hands, okay? It's not a problem if you don't have a problem inside the body. But if you have an issue with candida, you don't want to consume any mold, okay? It's not gonna hurt you otherwise, but it's gonna be a problem for candida. So for a cantaloupe to be ripe, it should be soft here at this end, right here. It should be soft and should smell nice like a cantaloupe. Because it's this type of skin, you can smell it. You know, you, you can't really smell a watermelon, 
or the other, it melds with, with the smooth skin, there isn't any scent that gets through that because it's completely sealed. So this is nice because it's easier to tell when it's ripe. Oliver Sacks, an English neuroscientist, wrote a book called Island of the Colorblind, where he, he went to this island in the South Pacific where 50% of the population was colorblind. Colorblindness is normally, I think, 3% or 6%, somewhere in that range, you know, around, around 3 to 6% of the population. And 50% of the population was colorblind. It turned out, they discovered that people there were eating some plant that grew on this island that, that destroyed the cones in your eyes that allow you to see color. So it didn't affect everyone, but it affected a lot of the people. And Oliver Sacks was there writing this book, and he went to one of the locals and said, who was colorblind and said, it must be challenging living on a tropical island if you can't see color. How do you know when a banana's ripe? And the native said, he said, this is where you're at a disadvantage because you depend only on color. We depend on the smell, the feel, the softness, so many other factors. There's lots of things that change when the fruit ripens, okay? Sometimes color is not the best way to judge. Um, let's see, pineapples. Now, this isn't really necessarily going to be fair, but, but it might be. Um, and I say that because with some pineapples, some pineapples stay green all the time, like here, always. That doesn't change. Others, uh, you know, become yellow or golden or almost white on the outside. Um, but again, like the other fruits, I mean, there, it should be a little bit soft. Okay, this one is a little bit softer. It should smell strongly of pineapple, and this one certainly has more scent, and the inner leaves should come out relatively easily. That one's not too hard to come out. It should be even easier here, they're pretty beat up, but if you pull the leaf, it should come right out. So this one even easier. These don't really ripen. Unfortunately, we don't get to go pick these. We, we order them, they get sent to us, and this is the way many of the pineapples are. It's still gonna be delicious and sweet, but it's also gonna be higher in acid. There are different varieties. There are some that are white inside. Some are very yellow. There's, there's a whole range of different colors inside. Um, they range in sweetness, etc. but um, these are the same. Let's see. So we've talked about coconuts. We don't have any whole coconuts here on site. We have many trees planted, but like most fruit trees, they take five or six years to start producing, and we don't have any producing yet. So we buy shaved coconuts. Now, you can probably find this in shops all over the world, right? Some people think this is what a coconut looks like. This is inside a coconut, okay? This comes inside of something that is roughly this big. I mean, they come in different sizes. They're usually green or yellow on the outside. And this is what's inside. So when you cut those, if you've ever cut one of those open or had someone cut it open for you, you see how it's got that, that space in the middle where all the water and flesh is? That's this. And the problem is, when you remove that outer husk, it's no longer impervious to airflow. And that means this will get rancid at room temperature. If you look at the bottom, and you can see this, this piece here, if you look at this side, the other side, there are three eyes. And this one has, is very soft. And that means the flesh is very soft inside. So if you want it to be, you know, if you're like on the road somewhere in the tropics and you want to buy a coconut and you want it to be very soft, see if you can stick your fingernail into one of those eyes. Okay, if it's soft, it'll be soft inside. If it's hard, it's going to be thick, hard flesh. Over time, that water becomes flesh. And so when you have a mature one, it's got thick flesh and very little water. When it's young, and it's actually sweeter, usually, when it's, when it's like this, um, you know, it's got lots of water, probably has very little flesh in it, and you can tell roughly by how, how soft that eye is. But you have to find the right one, because two of those eyes will be hard, there's three, one will be soft. Coconut flesh, I mean, it's like eating nuts. You wouldn't want to try to survive eating nuts. That doesn't work very well, okay? It's one thing, if there's nothing else to eat, right, you can survive, but you have to eat much less than usual, because they're so dense, so fatty. Okay, let's talk about watermelons. Um, we don't really have what I was hoping for here, and that's a good thing. That means all the watermelons came the way we want them to. But 
this doesn't work so well with the, with the big ones, which we don't buy here. We typically only buy the, the round watermelons like these. When these are, are the right texture, the right consistency, there should be a high-pitched sound. Okay, if what you hear is a low pitch, I was hoping to have one with a low sound so you could hear the difference. The lower one's gonna be more of a thud. It's fairly high pitch. The low one's gonna be more of a, I can't, I can't even make it happen. You hear that? It's got a high, it's, it's even a higher pitch, right? Now when it's like this, when you, when you go to cut this, you start to cut it open, it'll split open by itself. That's usually perfect, okay? It won't tell you how sweet it is. It only tells you the consistency is right. The yellow spot happens because of lack of sun. Um, these guys don't, don't seem to get the same, that same spot. I mean, these are really, really good, and they don't happen. But with the big melons, it's true. There should be a spot where it doesn't have a color, uh, and that usually means it's sat on the vine longer. Um, if, there's, if it's been cut, you know, sometimes they actually leave a bit, a bit of the stem. Here, there they really isn't. But if there's any bit of the stem there, it should be withered up because that's what happens when it's ready, it withers up. If, you know, if it still has like a hearty, thick stem on it, they cut it, and it wasn't really ready yet. Okay, it's always best to let things ripen on the plant when possible. This time of year, they're very sweet, right? Um, we get these all year long. We can gr these grow all year long in Costa Rica, but in the rainy season, they're more watery. There's less sugar because there's so much rain. So they, they really, you know, they need to be watered, but they're actually much better in the dry season, much sweeter. So you guys are here at a good time of year for watermelons. Tomatoes, again, this is probably obvious, right? Tomatoes should be red, uniformly red. They should be a little soft, uh, should smell like a tomato. This one has a little bit less smell. It's definitely harder and it's not quite red. We actually have them in the fridge. We didn't bring any out, but peppers. We also grow lots of wild peppers here but peppers should be red yellow purple uh, what else? orange these are all ripe peppers green peppers are not ripe. okay and that's why they're not as sweet that's why a lot of people burp after they eat them because they're harder to digest okay I wouldn't recommend eating green peppers the question is how about hothouse tomatoes and hydroponic tomatoes so First of all, uh, I'm a little concerned about things grown in greenhouses, a hot house is a greenhouse, because glass and plastic reflect UV radiation. I believe that fruits, you know, produce like us should get the full spectrum of sunlight. And if you're growing something in a greenhouse, you're not getting the full spectrum of sunlight. So it's always preferable to get food that's been grown outside. I, I found no science to support this. I've looked. I haven't found anything. But I can't imagine how fruits grown without part, you know, without the full spectrum of sunlight could have the same nutrients as things grown with the full spectrum. So I'd always prefer to have something grown outside if possible. Hydroponically grown foods, they're, they're typically not grown in water. They're grown in a, a medium. It's like a, a grit, like volcanic stuff that's filled with water. And so the plant has something to put roots into, but it's not really soil. And so what they do is they use liquid nutrients, okay? It's never organic, can't be because of what, the way they're feeding it. Um, and because of that, my preference would be for things grown in the dirt. I, you know, I, I trust nature. I don't trust things so much that aren't, aren't natural. I don't really know. I mean, maybe it's okay, but I have trouble believing it's gonna be just as good as something that's grown in the soil. So I'd always prefer something grown in the soil. Sometimes, Maybe it's your only option, right? I've been to places where the only greens that looked any good were the hydroponically grown greens. I'll eat them if that's all there is. Most things, let's see, the mangoes ripen after they're picked, the apples don't, the guavas do if you don't pick them too soon. The um, mulberries, you really want to wait for them to be ripe. Uh, I do have a few other things here. The bananas will ripen if they're not picked too soon. You know, again, we don't wait for them to be ripe because the birds and bats will eat them all. Same with papayas, we have to pick those. Um, papayas will ripen, but you know, again, can't be too soon. You have to, you have to wait. Avocados never ripen on the tree. Okay, avocados come off the tree, they fall off the tree hard and green, and then they ripen. These are Haas avocados. When it's ripe, it should be soft. 
If it's still hard, it's definitely not ready. I prefer to buy avocados, but I don't need them right now. I prefer to buy avocados that are still hard because that means they're less likely to be bruised. If you buy something that's ripe, it could be that a lot of people handled it, and that's part of why it's so soft. Okay, you open it up and it's all beat up. Then another thing you can do, uh, you see this little piece here where it came off the tree? If you pull this off and it's, it's green inside like that, it's gonna be good. Okay, if it's all brown inside, don't buy it. A lot of fruits actually put off ethylene gas as they ripen. So if you wanna ripen it faster, what you do is you put them in a paper bag with a piece of a banana or a piece of an apple, okay? Because it's actually gonna release more gas that way. So that's one way you can speed things up a little bit if you, if you need to or want to. Apples. So again, this isn't, this isn't necessarily gonna be completely accurate because I, ideally an apple will be completely red. This apple will be completely red. I think this is um, a gala apple. These are grown locally in Costa Rica. They're small for gala apples. That's because of the weather here. It's, it's actually not cold enough long enough, believe it or not. That's the opposite problem, right? These grow perfectly well in places that are quite cold. This one is, you know, it's still a bit green. Probably better to wait a while. It should ripen a little bit. It really should be ripe when it's picked, but uh, it'll still change a little bit. Okay, who knows what these are? Anybody? Tangerines? Mandarin? So, yeah, it looks like that doesn't. I was, uh, I just got to Panama. I was at the big produce market in Panama City, and I'm looking at this, and I said to the guy in my very bad Spanish, you know, KS Esta, what is that? And he said, limon mandarina. And I heard mandarina. That's mandarin. And he says, here. And he hands it to me. Like, he gives it to me. So while these two old guys are standing there watching, grinning, I peel it, put a piece in my mouth, and they're laughing their heads off because it's very acidic. It's a lime. It's called a mandarin lime. And it's very acidic. Okay. Um, should be this color, but we're not eating them anyway. You know, it's, it's okay to use the juice from this. Uh, if you're going to use juice from a citrus, uh, lime, lemon, whatever, what you can do is put it on the table and roll it like this. You're liberating the juice. Can you see? You're liberating the juice by doing this first. Put some pressure on it, and then you cut it, and you'll get, be able to get more juice out of it. People often ask about putting a little bit of lime juice in their water or something else. You can do that. However, when your body sees calories or nutrients, which lime juice has, not very calories, but nutrients, it thinks there's food coming. And it sends a bunch of energy to your digestive tract to fire things up. So you do not want to be doing this all the time. For the same reason that you don't want to drink coconut water instead of water between meals. Because your digestive tract is constantly working. This is food, this is liquid food, okay? So I might have this as a meal sometimes. I might have an occasional snack, but it's not like all day long I'm sipping on coconuts. My digestive tract will be working all the time. I don't want it to do that. So if I'm drinking water, I don't put lime in it, okay? I don't put anything in it, just water. All right, how about this one? Anyone know what this is? Yeah, these here, they call these mandarins, right? These are in the tangerine family. Um, these are the, the ones that have very, you know, the soft skin that it completely falls away from the fruit. It's easy to peel. Um, and this is the time of year. So. This one, it's really too green, okay? But with citrus, part of what changes the color on citrus is cold. So again, you know, if you look at the oranges here, our oranges are almost never completely orange because it doesn't get cold enough. So here, this isn't really the best climate to grow most citrus. Um, the, the tangerines, the mandarins are pretty good. The oranges here, for my taste, they're not that sweet. Bananas, pineapples, papayas, uh, watermelons, these are all things we get all year long here. Um, even on, even here on the property, we, the papaya plants put out fruit all year long, the banana plants put out fruit all year long. There are seasons where they're happier or less happy. Uh, jackfruits, I think there's about eight months a year where they're producing fruit, and that's cool. We're up to what, maybe five or six different jackfruit family members. Mm -hmm. Maybe more with what's, yeah, what's coming now. More are coming. Yeah. yeah, we've got we've got seeds coming soon, different things. So it'd be even more.
This is just a small percentage of what we have available to us at different times of the year. So in a couple months, there's a lot more stuff available. And in March, when we do our fruit festival here, we'll have 35, up to maybe 40 or 45 different fruits available. 100% organic. It's amazing. The, you know, the food's incredible. Everyone loves the food, but we also have a good time. So uh, there'll be a link here below. You can check on, click on that for more information and uh, get yourself registered now. See you soon.